Why are these two Protestants desiring or even willing to go on a Latter-day Saint cruise? Hello Saints, my name is Jeff. I am a pastor in Utah exploring everything I can about the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And I'm joined in this video by my amazing, wonderful, beautiful wife, Joy. Hello. And we recently had a very unique experience, one that I never really anticipated, and that is we were invited to participate in a Latter-day Saint cruise. cruise. Yeah, the cruise was through Go and Do Travel, which is a Latter-day Saint travel company. So yeah, what was our experience like? Hanging out with a bunch of Latter-day Saints, learning from Latter-day Saints, being entertained by Latter-day Saints, having dinner with them. We're gonna tell you all about it, and uh, let's start with how the trip unfolded. So yeah, we embarked from San Diego and then we had a day at sea, which also so happened to be Easter, mm -hmm. which was a really unique experience to spend Easter on a cruise ship. So our first destination day was in Ensenada, Mexico. We got off the boat just for a minute because that's a cool thing about cruises. Sometimes staying on the boat is just as fun as getting off the boat because there's just so much to do. But we got off for a minute, got a little flair for the culture there. Then when we got back on, we got to listen to a couple more awesome presentations and then spend another day at sea before we ended up in San Francisco. When you're saying day at sea, it actually is night at sea, which is super cool because you go to bed and then you wake up and you're porting at some new location. Yeah, so and you look, you look out the window and it's a completely different scene. Yeah. We then um, Ubered over to Muir Woods and we were there for a couple hours and it was gorgeous, amazing. Yeah. It's just so peaceful. After that, we explored Salsalito, which I don't remember doing when we were in that area before. Mm -hmm. And that was an adorable little town. They gotta get the napkin off this. And then after that, we took the ferry over to Pier 39. So it felt like a really full jam-packed day of really super fun stuff. And then after the San Francisco day, we spent another day at sea before we ended up in Santa Barbara. Now we weren't able to get off of the boat on that day because that was the day that I did my presentation, which we'll talk about more in just a minute. Santa Barbara was beautiful. It looked like just even seeing it from the ship looked like something out of a magazine. Yeah, we wish we could have gotten off the boat, but we had stuff to do. And then we head back to San Diego. And after we got off the ship, we actually spent a day in San Diego, which was really cool. Yeah, that was a fun day too. I don't think we've ever walked around San Diego for sure. And the culture and the aesthetic and architecture was all very different than I think I've ever really traveled to. Like I've never traveled to a place like that. It just looked yeah. very different. So all travel aside, what was it like being on the boat? Because that's where we spent most of our time and that's also where we made some of the coolest connections. Hey, hey, hey. how's it going? It's a Hello Saints crowd. Hey guys, how you doing? So the first night that we were there, we on previous cruises have gone to the maitre d' and said, excuse us, can we have our own table? And we contemplated doing that because sometimes when you go on a cruise, they'll put you at a table with people you don't know. And we're glad that we didn't because we ended up at a table with other go and do travel presenters and entertainers, namely Marjorie and Brad Louder and Elaine and Steve Dalton. And there were a couple of other presenters that came and went at our table, but we had some amazing conversations over the dinner table with those individuals. Yeah, that was probably one of my favorite highlights from the trip was just having the opportunity almost every night to sit and dine and have a meal, share a meal with the same people each night. 
that was really special and gave us a lot of time to really build relationship and also have really meaningful conversation. There's really something sacred about sitting around a table and breaking bread with one another. Yeah. And we talked about life, we got to know each other, we told stories, but we also got really deep into our convictions, into our doctrines, into our beliefs. And I would say that, and I know I said this on the boat, but it was more than important, it was more than memorable. There was something sacred yeah, about those conversations. Sure. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't just that dinner table with the Daltons and with the Louders, but there were other evenings where we were with guests from the cruise, just other go and do travel travelers. And we got to spend some time over dinner with Bruce Porter, who is an incredibly knowledgeable and insightful Latter-day Saint researcher. And I mean, he's essentially an archeologist. I really appreciate just how different I am from Bruce Porter <laughs> in the sense that he is so incredibly knowledgeable. He has written encyclopedias that will just never be said about me in my life. <laughs> and I just love that I got to share a conversation and a meal with him and learn from him. And I just really appreciated that time that we got to spend with him. And I also appreciated Brian Mickelson because he let me have some of his candied bacon. <laughs> Brian Mickelson, he's with Go and Do Travel. He'll share his candied bacon with you. <laughs> yeah, and we also got to share lunches with people like Greg Matson, who is a dear, dear friend of ours. And he actually hosted all of the talks that took place. I know Greg is a public figure, so I don't know how much of this kind of comes across in his podcasting and other things that he does, but he's an incredibly tender-hearted mm. man. Yes. And I just so appreciate times where we have conversation with him because he absolutely engages us with that heart. Yeah. And other people that we were able to make some really awesome connections with, Conlon and Rachel Bonner, um, they are now very special friends of ours and it all started on this cruise. Conlon and Rachel Bonner, if you know the Bonner family at all, you know that they're incredibly musically talented. Um, but on top of that, there was an opportunity for Conlon and Rachel. They were really gracious to invite people into a really personal story um, that has now become part of their testimony and it is pretty um, moving to hear them share. Yeah. Amazing souls, amazing talent. They actually brought their kids on stage to sing with them for one song, which is adorable. Totally precious. We shared breakfast with them a couple times, but really after the fact, started to connect with them even more. Now our families are hanging out all the time. Enjoy Marco <laughs> Polo's with Rachel all the time. <laughs> and I actually, she gave me a little house plant that she took off her house plant. Mm -hmm. And now it's like budding new leaves and just feels like symbolic of our mm -hmm. friendship. And speaking of talent, I mean, Nathan Pacheco, oh my goodness, he is like world class talent, just total star power with an amazing voice. And his wife is the sweetest Southern belle you've ever met. Yeah, you and Katie really hit it off. That was fun. Other people who presented and who we made some really cool connections with, Gainalyn Condi, who is there. Love Gainalyn Condi. Gainalyn is an excellent communicator. She's also hilarious and has a lot of energy, but she's also really thoughtful and insightful and spiritually minded. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Another one of my favorite connections that we've made, somebody I'm talking to on a regular basis is Garrett Batty. I was who, like, who? He, yeah, Garrett Batty, he's a Latter-day Saint filmmaker. There's a film coming out that he produced. It's gonna be really cool. It's coming out in September. It's called The Faith of Angels. You really need to check it out. Link in the description. So that was one thing we actually got to do in the evening one night on the cruise was watch his movie. And it's an amazing, amazing story. Yeah, and we got to hang out every evening on one of the decks playing board games with Grandpa Beck. Yes, we came home with some of Grandpa Beck's games and we are loving them. But that's just how the rhythm of the cruise went, where you're kind of laid back, hanging out on the boat, having snacks with each other, but also two to three hours a day where there were these talks and presentations and presenters and entertainers. It was just a really cool blend of relaxation and getting to know one another and 
exciting excursions. It was a lot of fun. And I think I forgot just how often you change outfits mm. when you're on a cruise. True. I feel like I change three to four times a day. You probably don't have to change that much, but like in the morning, I just wanted to be casual going to breakfast and then I would put my normal clothes on and then by the evening you're dressing more formally. I think that there were a couple outfits I didn't wear at all and a couple other outfits that I wore like multiple times. It's difficult to figure that out sometimes. On yeah. So let's get to the real reason why I was invited. Greg Matson extended the invitation on behalf of Go and Do Travel because I was asked to have a conversation, to give a talk, to make a presentation on interfaith dialogue. And Greg and I sort of demonstrated what that looks like. And it was just a really amazing opportunity to be able to share in that format. Yeah, the format for yours, which was more conversational, more like a podcast, was kind of a neat thing. And you did a great job. Thank you, I appreciate You're it. Welcome. You're natural up there. Thank you. Yeah, and actually the presentation that I did, along with all the other presentations, are available on YouTube. And here's just a little taste of the conversation that Greg and I had on the Momentum Cruise. We, if we're getting hit all the, si all the time on both sides of this, why do this? Why do it? And is it worth it? Um, it's a great question. Well, I would, I, would, I would answer that question with a question. What do we miss out on when we define and marginalize, I know I say this a lot, by like just a monolithic idea about a group of people? It's like, well, they're just Latter-day Saints. Or they're just evangelicals. Um, that's just not what Jesus did. Jesus didn't come and say, well, they're just Samaritans. Or they're just the Pharisees. Let's just sidestep them. He walked right into those conversations. Well, they're just prostitutes. They're just tax collectors. No. He dined with them. He talked with them. He, uh, he wasn't just mean to the Pharisees. Look at the beautiful, patient, sacred conversation he had with Nicodemus in John chapter 3. Some of our most sacred scriptures come out of that conversation. So why have the conversations? Because if we don't, I think that we're, we're, we are derelict in our calling to emulate the Savior in our interactions with one another. So it was a really great conversation and I was truly honored to be a part of the conversation and just the collective voice that was presented on this Momentum Cruise. All right, so let's talk about the 2025 Momentum Cruises, which we're gonna be on and we're really excited. There's an East Coast and there's a West Coast. And here's the invitation, not just to be part of the go and do travel experience, but they are giving us exclusive opportunities to hang out with the Hello Saints audience. So if you wanna come and hang out with Joy and I, come be with us. on the Momentum 2025 Cruises, here's how you can do it. So January 4th through January 11th, there's going to be the West Coast Cruise. And here are some of the other presenters that are going to be on the cruise. Nathan Pacheco, Jenna Oaks Baker, J209, which was featured on video on the cruises that we were on, but it's a Christian acapella group that Brian Mickelson's son Shane is managing. Yes, up and coming. Yeah. Conlon and Rachel Bonner will be there. Eric Orton, Emily Orton, Elaine Dalton, who we absolutely love. Brent and Wendy Topp, Carrie Muehlstein, Bruce Porter, our boy Greg Matson, Grandpa Beck, and us will be there. On the West Coast cruise, we're gonna embark out of San Diego, and in addition to Cabo San Lucas, we're gonna be visiting a few other spots in Mexico. So that should be a pretty fun cruise. Now the East Coast cruise, which again, we'll also be on, and you can come hang out with us, will be February 8th through February 15th. So let's just highlight the fact that that is over Valentine's Day. So that can be an extra romantic experience and just an excuse for you to come and hang out on this cruise. Some of the entertainers and presenters on this one will be Nathan Pacheco, Jenny Oaks Baker, Conlon and Rachel Bonner, which by the way, not only are they presenting and they're performing, but Conlon is gonna be emceeing these cruises, which is gonna be super fun. What? Eric and Emily Orton, Brent Top, Wendy Top, Bruce Porter, Gaynalyn Condi, Greg Matson, Grandpa Beck, and I'm really excited about this, the entire Bonner family will be on this East Coast cruise. So you gotta come and hear them perform because they are a powerhouse group. I can't wait. And the destinations on the East Coast cruise are really gonna be in the Caribbean. So it's embarking out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida and going to the Bahamas and Grand Turk and Amber Cove and Key West, Florida. So there's gonna be a bunch of really cool stops in the Gulf and that's gonna be 
another amazing trip that we're really looking forward to. Now, both of these cruises are on the Holland America Cruise Lines and beautiful boats with not only amazing amenities, but also amazing entertainment and excursions and they just offer top-notch service and fantastic food. I didn't know what to do when I got home. Because you didn't want to cook? Because <laughs> I didn't, because we could have like 16 course meals at every meal and it was all included. Yeah. It's true. So then how can you participate in these cruises? Well, just go to goanddotravel.com. And if you use the coupon code Jeff, you will get $50 off per person. And that's gonna sign you up for the VIP access to the presentations that we are doing so that you can be a part of those events that are taking place on the boat. It's gonna be really cool. I've got some awesome ideas on what we can do while we're all hanging out together in this exclusive Hello Saints gathering. So when people ask us and like, why are we even willing to be a part of these cruises? What comes to your mind? What, what is the answer that you would give to somebody that might be wondering like, why are these two Protestants desiring or even willing to go on a Latter-day Saint cruise? So this is only our second cruise. And the thing that was different for us is that now we're a part of a group. When we went on our first cruise, we weren't a part of a group. We weren't going to conferences each day, you know, sessions with different speakers and things. I personally really enjoyed that. I love to learn. And then we're also seeking to know and understand Latter-day Saints and their world and their culture. And so it really was a great immersive opportunity for us to really connect and get to know other Latter-day Saints that we had never met before, some of which we have remained connected and in touch with post cruise, which has been an awesome blessing. I loved the blend of having fun, having amazing food, getting to go out every other day and travel different places, locations, and then also having the opportunity to sit in on sessions where you're learning from people and talking about more meaningful things too. One thing that I'm just now remembering that people kept saying to us while we were on this cruise and the only evangelicals in the group, the Go and Do Travel group, was that we were so brave. They're like, you're so brave to be here. I actually did not feel like we were the brave ones. I felt like you guys were the brave ones to allow us into that space and to welcome us and be open to hearing from us. Yeah, everybody was so kind, super gracious, incredibly welcoming. We had amazing conversations with so many of the guests. And I mean, that's really what it was all about. It was about these really awesome connections. Yeah. And to again, take Hello Saints off of the screen, take it out of this virtual space and to kind of walk a more incarnational path to carry out this opportunity to make connections and we'll hopefully just open the doors for other opportunities for whether it's us or somebody else for these conversations that would not normally take place to happen. And we're really appreciative that going to travel was brave enough and kind enough and hospitable enough to invite us to participate in this opportunity. I think it was a great experience for everybody and I'm really excited to be a part of the next couple of cruises. Me too. Yeah. So go to goanddotravel.com to get all the information you need on the Momentum 25 cruises. In the meantime, keep coming back here for more videos. Like this video, subscribe, leave some comments, and if you want, you can support us on Patreon. If not, you don't have to. Just keep coming back for more videos. I'll be doing some, Joy will be in some. So until next time, we'll see you later, Saints. So on the one that, so the one that, so we only went on one and so we, okay. So we, <laughs> you want to talk a little bit about some of those connections? Um, sure. Go ahead, Joy. <laughs> well. Yes. So we embarked from San Diego and then we had a day at sea and that day at sea just so happened to be Easter. Oh. Well, you knew that you were there. I did. I did know that. But for some reason, when you, you were sounding so excited, I thought you were going to say it was like my birthday or something. No. You're like, just so happy to be Jesus's, my wife's birthday. It was Jesus' birthday, his second birthday. Okay. And here are some of the other presenters that are going to be on the cruise. Nathan Pacheco. Jenna. No, no, no. Don't do that. Nathan Pacheco. And then, you know, as far as other just talented star power, Nathan Pacheco. Oh, my goodness. Like, his singing is... Oh. I mean, Nathan Pacheco. Oh. <laughs> so one of the things we haven't talked about yet, one of my favorite, most favorite parts. Okay. 
was when we would show up back to our room and there was an elephant on our bed. It <laughs> <laughs> not a real elephant, to be clear. It was not a real elephant. That would have been weird. It was a towel origami elephant and it was it was so perfect. It was impressive. And it it really left a mark. It left an impression on me that when we were our last night <laughs> our last night in San Diego when we stayed at the hotel, I actually was <laughs> Go on, tell them what you did. <laughs> tell them what you did. I was so inspired. Mm -hmm. I was so inspired that I actually made the housekeepers at the hotel an origami towel elephant. Mm -hmm. It looked it, a little more like Dumbo. Yeah. Than their like very perfect yeah. elephant, but I still thought it was very cute. And we we thought it would have been hilarious if we just kept like making all these different towel origami just animals. Just filled the room with different origami towel animals. Yeah. They would have loved us. I think so. That's going to be our new thing. So, like the Gideons leave Bibles, we leave origami towel animals. <laughs> <laughs>